In this presentation we will discuss what it means for a function to be odd. We will occasionally refer to another presentation where we talked about even functions, so it's probably a good idea, if you haven't looked at that one, that you view that first. An odd function is a function whose graph looks the same if we rotate it by 180 degrees about the origin. We can think of the origin as a pivot, and we swivel the graph around by 180 degrees. Probably the most well-known odd function, and the simplest, is just y equals x. It has a graph which is a sloping straight line, 45 degrees through the origin, and if we think about rotating it about O, of course it rotates into itself. Another commonly used odd function is y equals x cubed. It comes up, passes through the origin with a stationary inflection, and then continues on up. Once again, if I've drawn it well, we could see that it would rotate into itself if we rotate about O. On the next page I've prepared a slightly more complicated function. This one is y equals x cubed minus x. It has the same property. It rotates into itself the maximum to the minimum, the minimum rotates to the maximum, and the two axis points, 1 and negative 1 on the x-axis, also rotate into each other. When we talked about even functions, we recognized that the cosine function was an important even function. Well, the corresponding function in the odd case is the sine. y equals sine x is odd. It has period 2 pi, so I draw a whole period from negative pi to pi with height 1 and negative 1. Once again we can see that it rotates into itself on rotation about the origin. Of course the sine does also extend beyond, but still the rotation would work. Once again, by analogy with the even functions, there we recognize that we could change the period of the cos function and still have an even function. Well, that's the same for the sine. y equals sine nx has period 2 pi over n. It's still an odd function, though. Right, 1, negative 1. This time the first axis crossing is at pi over n, minus pi over n. And once again, if I've drawn it well, which in this case I haven't really, it should look as though it rotates into itself. When we talked about even functions, we decided that a pictorial representation was not really, really enough and that it would be good to have a mathematical formula that expresses evenness. Well, of course, the same is true for oddness. We go about it in the same way. Here I've prepared some general function which looks as though it might be odd. We can pick a point P on the axis and measure up to the graph to the point P f of P, and then we could go an equal distance the other side to negative P and measure down to the graph at negative P f of negative P. Now consider the two heights that I'm now marking in. If I'd made a really good job of the graph, those two black lines would rotate into each other after rotation by 180 degrees. They would have the same height, except that one is above the axis on the right, while the one on the left is below the axis. A mathematical way of expressing this would be to say that f of negative p has the same numerical value as f of p, but in the opposite direction, so there's a minus. This would be true wherever we chose p and minus p along the axis, and consequently the mathematical means of expressing oddness is to say that f of negative x is the same as minus 
f of x. That's true for all odd functions. Once again, we could do a little exercise and show that a particular function is odd. Let's look at the following. Show that y equals f of x equals x to the power 5 plus 4 over x is odd. First we write down f of x, it's just the original function. Then we write down f of negative x, that's going to be negative x to the power 5 plus 4 over negative x. Now minus to the power 5 will be minus again because 5 is an odd power. So that will make negative x to the fifth minus 4 over x which is the equivalent to minus x to the fifth plus 4 over x in brackets, which is minus f of x. We have proved that f of negative x is minus f of x, so we can conclude that f of x is odd. Maybe it would come as no surprise that all odd powers are also odd functions. When it comes to looking at the area under the curve, odd functions have an extra minus sign. If we shade in, for example, the area to the left here from negative t as far as the origin, and call that a1, and then the area to the right call that a2, then clearly a1 is negative a2 because a1 is beneath the axis. In terms of integrals, this means that the integral from negative t to 0 of f of x dx is minus the integral from 0 to t of f of x dx. And if we try and integrate over the whole range from negative t to t, the areas will cancel and we will obtain zero. Odd functions are also very useful when we study Fourier series, just as were even functions. If you have got this far and understood everything, then you should look at a third screencast entitled Properties of Odd and Even Functions, where we discuss some further useful properties.